Stephen Gray Ministries. This morning I want to talk to you about learning to live in the glory realm. Never preached this message before, fresh off the press as you might say. Exodus chapter 40 verse 36 says, Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. So I read that years ago and I realized that's how we're to live. We're to live by the glory. I said, okay, God, I, I get it. I understand. And then he took me to 2, Corinthians, or 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. I'm sorry, it was 2 Thessalonians 2, 14. Where he talks about the great falling away. He starts it in verse chapter 1. He talks about the great apostasy. But then look down in verse 14 what he says. Same passage. To which he called you by our gospel. For what purpose? Anybody? You the glory of God. For the obtaining of the glory of the Lord. So that when I read that, here's what I realized. The gospel's purpose, that thing that we all focus on, that everybody's main attention is on in the church... It's just a doorway to get the glory of God. That's what this verse is saying. So I realized that there's something to this. We're, we're supposed to be able to live in this and have access to it. John, uh, Jesus says in John 17, 21 and 22, Father, I pray they be one as we are one. Okay? This is Jesus praying the high priestly prayer before he goes to the cross. This is a key passage for a couple of reasons. John 17, 21. Let me just go ahead and turn there so I can read it in all of its glory. John 17 and verse 21, it says this, that they all may be one. He's talking about you and me. As you, Father, are in me and I'm in you, that they also may be one in us. Now, what does he mean when he says, I'm in you and you in me? Because Jesus is standing here and the Father's in heaven. So what does that mean? I'm in you and you in me. One will. That's, that's correct. So, the, so he's saying, we have the same will, Father. I, I do whatever you say. We're, we're just an extension. And so now he's saying that, so we're one. So now he's saying, I pray for them that we would be one with him. Now you think about what that's going to look like. Oneness with God? Guess what? That's another definition for spiritual maturity. Oneness with God. Now I want to, for those of you that maybe you're growing and maybe you're not where you want to be yet, of course all of us are probably there, but think about this for a minute. What would oneness with God look like? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready for that. Oneness with God. Do you think that person would have some peace in their life? Yeah. How about some power? Uh, yeah. That's correct. I want to talk to you about how to walk in the glory, and I've, I've prayed and prayed, and I've asked God to help me. Um, um, the glory hit my life in Africa in 1999, and for about six months, wherever I went, you couldn't even touch me or get near me. People that would come to just meet with me and talk with me would, would leave drunk. 
And so that went on for about six months. But then after about six months, it started lifting to the extent where it was primarily on me in Africa and not in America. And that's where it was for probably three or four years. And I would go to these meetings and I would have so many people prophesy over me, these prophets, that your anointing is for Africa. Your anointing is for Africa. And God would always speak and say, no, your anointing is for me. For wherever I send you. I mean, you, you, I, at, least, at least a dozen prophets came up and prophesied that to me. And God would correct it as soon as they'd say it. No. You're anointed by me to go where I send you. The anointing's not on Africa. The anointing's not on America. The anointing's not on Florence. It's on you, and it's coming from God. Amen. Now think about that for a minute. <clears throat> Jay, this is a direct answer to all your questions you've had all week. Where have you been? Well, the dancing shook things up. <laughs> Dis that's called distraction. Stop giving in to distraction. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so... So I started asking God, how do I get this? in America. How do I carry this anointing here and there? If, it, if this is from you. And so the first thing it changed was I started understanding how to carry this in the meetings in America. So I could do it in Africa and I could do it in the meetings in America. But I wanted it on my life. I wanted it in my home. I wanted it on my family. And I couldn't get it in my home. And so I was like, God, what's the problem? I've, I've got it in Africa. I've got it in the meetings here in America. But I, and God says, it's not the anointing. It's you. It's you. You're, you're not focused on me. You have to focus on me and the Spirit. Guys, I couldn't believe the difference of going to Africa and letting everything of this world go. You see, for two weeks, and those of you that have been to Africa, you know what I'm talking about. You go over there, you don't think about your bills, you don't think about your problems, you don't think about anything. You let all that go. You let the worries and cares of this world go. And for just a brief two-week period, you totally focus on God. And that's the result you get. And so I was going, whoa, God's showing me something. So I started coming home in America. And guess what I started doing? I started getting up and doing quiet time as desperately as I do in Africa. I didn't get up to just say, hey, God, it's Monday. What's up? I got up to say, I got to have a word from God today because I may need it later on in the day. God, speak to me. God, I need to hear from you today. I was desperate. I was focused on God. I, I did my worship. I, I did all those things. And slowly but surely, God started, see, he said, now you're starting to get it, son. Now you're starting to get it. Don't make your disciplines different from Africa than America. Don't make your focus different than Africa and America. Don't make your, your concentration different than Africa and America. Make all those things around you, all those things you're worried about, let them go. Did I not say, seek first my kingdom and his righteousness and I will give you all these things? God says, when I say test me in tithing, what do you think I'm testing you for? I'm testing you to see if I will not pour out blessings upon you if you do what I say. That's what he's testing you for. He's not testing you to say you, you, you did bad. I'm taking it away from you. 
He's testing you to see if you'll trust him to provide for you, which he will do. You have to learn to live by the Spirit to overcome. You're overcomers. Are you struggling? Are you frustrated? Are you discouraged? And you just don't want to tell anybody? Let me tell you why. You're an overcomer, but you ain't overcoming. Let me me say that just in case somebody didn't get that. You're an overcomer. You've been called by God to be an overcomer, and you ain't overcoming because you don't know how. But you're fighting learning how. That's religion. That's what you're caught in. That's what I've been trying to pry you out of. Is all that reasoning and, well, what did man say? And what is this about? And how many of y'all got books? I started to bring a big stack of mine this morning. You know, big old back of books. That's one of the altars. You know what that altar is? Pride. We're going to man for the answers. Man ain't got the answers, church. Listen to me. Man does not have your answers. If you want man's answers, you better go follow man. But where we're going, there's only one person knows the way, and that's God. It ain't in a book. It ain't on TV. It ain't on the radio. It ain't on a CD. We've got to hear God at this hour. It don't matter what they're doing down the road. It don't matter what's going on in Africa. It don't matter. What is God saying to you? It don't matter what Betty Bob, and this is really Ellen, but don't matter what Ellen's doing. We ain't going to criticize Ellen. Well, Ellen ain't doing things right. Well, guess what? You ain't doing things right either. <laughs> That's the plank in your eye. That's the speck in your eye. Ellen ain't doing things right. Do you know why you're worried about what Ellen's doing? Because you want to feel better because you ain't being an overcomer. Well, I'm doing the best I can. I don't care. God's called you to be an overcomer. Well, no one ever told me how to be an overcomer. But now someone's trying to tell you how and you're fighting him tooth and nail. Because of religion. Y'all don't get it. I know y'all don't like it when I say you don't get it, so let me say it this way. I'm praying y'all are going to get this. I'm praying y'all are going to see this. Because you're going to miss it. Wouldn't that be terrible to miss the move of God? To just, listen, don't think you can't miss it. I've seen it. I've seen people come in. I've seen them be flopping in the floor like fish and go out and get offended and leave and never come back. Don't think you can't be removed. Don't think God can't remove you. God can remove all of us in a heartbeat. All he's got to do is just open the door and let the enemy come in and, and get a hold of somebody. And you get mad, offended, upset. What if that song that power song? Press, keep your focus and press for, keep pressing forward. That is a word from God. That's what God is saying to us. God has started something and he's going to finish it. And it ain't about if we don't get this just right, he'll leave. It ain't, it don't work that way. He's going to do this. The only question is, will you be a part of it? Will you be in on it? Will he have to move you aside to bring somebody else in that's more in love with Jesus than you are? Because that's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. You want to you understand the glory? Listen, you can't understand it because you have to learn how to attract the glory. It, it's got to be attracted. And you attract it by falling in love with Jesus. And you can't fake that. You can't work that up. But you've got to fall in love with him. And he will help you if you'll let him. I want to talk to you about the the realm of man, the flesh realm first. Let's look at that. This is the realm of religion. 
I found the spiritual realm through the glory. I didn't know the spiritual realm existed like it does. But I found the spiritual realm through the glory. Self-pleasing is at the center of the great obstacle against the glory. Self. Remember the idolatry of self is one of the four keys. Self is what we're battling. Self is our, is our hindrance. It hinders our access. It hinders our thoughts. It affects our thoughts. It affects our hindrances. And, and here's, here's one of the things. Let me give you an example. Let's just say, let's just say that, um, <coughs> that you really got angry at your, your best friend. Okay, and you walked out and you said, oh, why did I do that? And you say, I'm really sorry. And you, you call your friend back and you say, you know, I'm really sorry. I should have gotten mad. Oh, you, no problem. I forgive you. We're all good. So then you go down there and you walk into a store and somebody does something and you get angry. How many times do you think the guilt from that last time you got angry comes back up in your spirit? Just for a brief moment and thought. And you, and you just dismissed it without realizing that's the enemy stealing your belief. That you're forgiven. Just a little flash of reminding you, remember. Remember you lost your temper. He's always just subtly trying to steal your belief. So that makes me realize if he's after my belief, guess what? I'm going to make sure my belief is strong. I'm going to know my verses. I'm going to do my study. I'm going to get in the word. I'm going to do my quiet time. I'm going to know what God is saying so I can walk in belief because that's what the enemy's after. That's how you fight in this realm. You've got to fight this thing spiritually. If you try to fight it in the flesh in your own efforts, you're already lost. I don't, even know how to, I don't even know how to describe what God's showing me. What self does, self is the heart of religion. Self says it's okay for you to control others. You say, well, I don't, I don't control others. Really? How about walking down the street? Hmm, don't like what she's wearing. Hmm, don't like what she's doing. Hmm. Don't like what she just said. Hmm. Don't like the way he's sitting. Hmm. Don't like where how she's dressed today. Too bright. When you don't walk in love, that's who you are. You walk in knowledge. And you walk around, you judge everything you see. That's religion. And you can't access the glory and you don't know why. Because your thinking's messed up. Because you're judging everybody. <laughs> and if you have an insecurity or you have a bad self-esteem, you're looking for them to find. You want to judge people. Because you're trying so hard to feel better about who you are. But here's the thing. If you just let go of all that judging and realize just accept what Jesus has done for you, you'll get all that anyway. <laughs> but we don't do that. Because we're still locked in this, re in this flesh realm where religion keeps you. You'll never be good enough. You'll never get this right. If you get it all just right, if you learn to keep all the laws, we're going to take you to heaven. Oh, I don't believe that, but it's back in your DNA, back in your little religious box, right back in here. We all got that in there. Religion is what's making us so judgmental and insecure in our identities. And if you are insecure in your identity, you've got to find problem with everybody. Is anybody listening to what I'm saying? 
<coughs> you think, well, I'm just not going to do... You, you, so you think you're managing it, you ain't managing nothing. You're a basket case because you can't control your thoughts because that stuff's in you. So you're just in a mess. And I'm trying to say to you, the problem is yourself. Repent of self. Repent of self-idolatry. Repent of always doing what you want. You know how many times I say to somebody, hey, look, you want to go do this? You know what they always say? I don't want to do that. I don't. I, 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 I. Almost never do you hear them say, well, let me pray about that. Or I don't feel that's what God's leading me to do. You don't ever hear people say stuff like that. They just say, they're, because they're always thinking about what their self, their little self God wants them to do. And you're following that and wondering why you're not accessing the glory. What's the problem? You know, I, I took Jay with me down to Africa, or down to Florida, and uh, we were in this meeting, and I was sitting there, and God spoke to me and said, let Jay, let Jay sh uh, open up, let him share something. And I was like, are you sure? I said, you know, this has been in the past. No, go ahead. Okay. I said, Jay. He was sitting in front of me. I said, Jay, God says you, you, you to share something. So he's, oh, really? Okay. So he gets up there. And I don't know who, who it was, but it wasn't him. I've never heard. Who, whoever that was, I've never heard that guy. It was, it was amazing. It was like the oracles of God being spoken. He talked about the love of God being poured out to these people. And, and I was like, oh, my goodness. So then he comes back home, and it's like, where is that guy? Well, who, what happened? I don't know. Where, where'd he go? Well, he's just now, he's just now starting to realize that's available. That, that power is available. But you, you have to be in love with God. And if you're not, you have to go fix that. Because there's idols. There's things in the way. You'd be amazed at the things that if you ask him, God, what's, what's hindering you and me right now? Almost in an instant, he'll tell you. What's hindering you and me right now? What is the block in my life right now? He will tell you. Religion. We're, we're so judgmental, I can't get off of that. How would you define religion? <coughs> well, let me just say this. When we talk about judgmental, one of our most heinous judgments is about emotion. We as a society think that knowledge is superior to emotion or feelings. Yet my God wept. My God has emotion. And my God's forming me into that image. So therefore, I want emotion and I want knowledge. But I want the balance. And I want to weep when it's time to weep. And I want to rebuke when it's time to rebuke. And I want to love when it's time to love. But we're making judgments all the time. And guys, you got to pray into this. Because God's showing me it, you, are, you are hindering yourself up. You are sliming yourself up. You come in and get cleaned up and you walk out the door. And he's not talking about specific people. He's just saying that we as a church are walking, walking down the street and we're judging everything. And you know why? <laughs> Because we're not walking in the revelation of God's love. 
Because see, that, that, tri that triumphs when you look at your neighbor and say, well, they're not doing what I would want them to do. Guess what? The love of God comes in and goes, but I love them anyway. But see, you're not getting there. You're just making the judgment about what they're doing and you're cutting yourself off. You're not even following through on the love part. Everywhere in the Bible where God rebukes somebody, He always gives them a way of restoration. Every place, Old Testament, there's always a way of restoration. We judge people, but we don't give them a way of restoration. We just judge them like it's official. Well, they're this, or they're that, or they're not going to, or they're in a mess. Or... And, and listen, guys, I don't see that way. I don't see that way. I don't see the way y'all are looking. I see the, the kingdom potential in people. If they got kingdom potential, I don't care how messed up they are because I, got a, I work for a guy who's pretty powerful. Yeah. And so I'll take somebody that most people will throw away and I'll take them and raise them up. And when, I'm, when God's done with them, they'll walk into church and people will be trying to get them to come to their church. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's what God does in people's lives. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it doesn't matter how messed up we are, it just matters are we willing to get free. Religious spirits affect us, making you less va valuable. Religious spirits make you feel less valuable. They make you want to do to achieve worth. They make you want to do to achieve worth or value. Say, God, today, I repent for doing anything for value. I already have my value. Thank you, Jesus, for my value. I'm not doing anything to get that. Which I already have. God don't need your help. God don't need my help. Huh? I said God doesn't need my help. He doesn't need my help. Listen, if you don't get your true value, if you don't get this in you, you will always be manipulated by demons. If you don't get this true value, if you don't accept this, if you don't get with God and say, okay, God, give it, i got to get this, you will always be manipulated by demons. Lying about your connection and acceptance to the family of God. That's what, the, that's what they'll always hit you at. Don't let him... <coughs> Affect, don't let the devil's lies affect your acceptance. Rebuke that spirit right now in Jesus' name. You'll never be good enough. So stop trying. You're never going to be good enough. You're never going to get there. The bar's too high. Give up. Quit. Go home. Jesus has already done it. Whatever you're trying to grab or get, He's already, he's already handing it to you. What are you fighting for? Accept what God has done. Religion says, no, 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 that wasn't enough. You've got to do some more. Accept what God has done. Say it today. I accept what God has done for me. <clears throat> I accept it. Do you know how the, the, the demons, that just aggravates them. I accept what God has done. Amen. Yet you got to believe it before you can share it. You've been trying to share this stuff, but you don't believe it yet. But when you believe it, whoo, it changes everything. And if you don't believe it, you can't walk in it. And if you don't walk in it, nobody wants to hear you anyway. And let, but you probably already figured that out. And guys, you can't walk in what's coming. I'm just telling you right now. You cannot walk in what's coming. It's beyond your mental abilities. Trust me. 
You can't, the demons are too sophisticated. You can't, you can't walk in what's coming unless you get in the spirit. That's the only hope you got. That's the only chance we've got is we've got to get in the spirit. Now let's talk for just a minute about the glory realm. We've talked about the, the, the flesh realm, the realm of man. Let's talk for a minute about the glory realm. Remember the verse I read to you in Exodus. They moved based on the glory. When it lifted, they got up and, and, and traveled. When it came down, they stayed there and camped. I get it. I'd, I'd be following the cloud too. Because <laughs> why wouldn't you? <laughs> there's a pattern. To me, there's a pattern of this. The glory would lift and they'd all pack up and then they'd travel and then they'd set back down. You know the first thing they would do when they sat down to camp? They'd set the tent of meeting. They'd set the place where the glory was going to be. They'd set that and then everything else around there was organized according to the tent of meeting. So they didn't just follow the glory. The glory was the center of their life, which means God was the center of their life. <coughs> That's the glory realm. It's <clears throat> the difference of the anointing where you're empowered to do something and the glory where you're disabled <laughs> to do something. That's why people fall under the glory. This is heavy. So I used to say, God, I was laying on the hotel room floor in, in Zanzibar when, or in uh, Nairobi one time. And I was on the floor, man, I was, I was so heavy I couldn't move. And, and I said, God, like, am I doing anything down here? I mean, I'm, I mean, and the enemy started speaking, said people have paid, paid, sent money, given you support, donations. And you're over here and you're laying on the hotel room floor. <laughs> What would they say? That, that's what the Spirit would say to them. And you know, I just sat there. I was, I was caught. I didn't know what to say. And the Lord came in. It was so cool. He's so powerful. He came in. You know what he said? He said, let me tell you something. This is how it sounded. He said, you're with me. He said, you're with me. He said, when you're with me, you don't have to tell nobody nothing. And that thing, whatever, man, it was gone in a heartbeat. God said, when you're with me, there ain't nothing better than that. I said, Lord, are, am I doing anything <laughs> laying on he said, no, you're not. I am. I said, you keep it, keep it up, God. <laughs> the glory is a relational draw in your life. The glory is a relational draw in your life. If you were spending 30 minutes a day with God, now you're going to have to spend two hours. Whoa. How am I going to do that? You better figure it out. Because if it's, if it's requiring an hour and you're giving 45 minutes, that ain't going to work. <laughs> Why well, ain't going to do what God says? Then you're not going to walk in the glory. It's a, a relational draw pull on your life when the glory comes. The glory is a preparation so to speak, for oneness. It's, it's, that's what J John 17, 22 says. He's given us this to bring us into oneness. So the glory brings you into intimacy. Does anybody want to be more intimate with God? Do you think you'd have more signs, wonders, and powers and fruitfulness if you were more intimate? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
God starts becoming your focus, not your church. Jay, will you turn? Could you turn the air on? It is hot. I thought. Well, I'm about to. I feel like I'm on a fire right now. Margaret, are you on fire now? Yes. It's only 11:30. Just you know, I just feel like I can't get out of this thing. The glory realm is a vortex of God's will. Amen. He's given me these things to, to help you understand. The glory is a vortex of God's will. You know what a vortex is? Yes. You know, go to flush your toilet and that's a vortex. A swirling, sucking motion. God's will, the glory is like a vortex for God's will. It just pulls God's will into being. It pulls God's will into happening. What is God's will on the earth? Does anybody have a clue? Being formed into his image. So it pulls that, it causes that to start to happen. So the issue then becomes one of your will versus your actions that take control. How many of you were surprised when you went through transformation prayer and you found out all these lies in your belief system? Pretty amazing, right? Guess what? Those lies force you to do things you don't want to do. All those lies are, are, are affecting your actions. That's why you act the way you act and you don't want to do it, but you keep doing it. It's because your belief system's not been changed. Change your belief system and you change your actions. That's why we've been hammering you and hammering you and hammering you about identity and righteousness. And slowly it starts to kind of leak in. <clears throat> the glory makes you more sensitive to the spiritual realm. It just seems like Jesus is closer. That's the only way to know to describe it. And and. And what, what would oneness look like? You know what I think it looks like? Is you don't have to hear God anymore. He's already in you. Exactly. So he's already in you, so you just know his thoughts. That's oneness. You act on his way. As that starts to merge into your life, you know about power? You have no idea. And, and, you know, I'm always sitting there thinking, what would it be? What is possible? I mean, how much power can we walk in? I don't know. But I'm going to try to find out. <laughs> You'd have to be sitting down here to hear that one. <laughs> You just start sensing things, and that's why what's going on with me with this rejection and whatever it is, whatever it is, God's doing, and I even hesitate to even try to explain it anymore. But, um, guys, God's getting us ready. God starts at the top. He starts with His church. God's working on you. God's working on me. God's working on this church. God's going to mess us up real good. <laughs> it's coming. It's here. Praise the Lord. Man. I can't wait. I can't wait. Y'all been making fun of me for what, five years? <laughs> I cannot wait for that Sunday. I'm going to be at the door with my little briefcase, and I'm just going to be, okay, God. Oh, who's, oh, yeah, yeah, I see you. Oh, yeah, I see you there. <laughs> I know it's coming. <sighs> Listen. 
Everything that you want to see happen starts in the spiritual. Everything you want to see happen in your life and around your life starts in the spiritual. If you figure that out, you can be used mightily by God. As above, so below. <coughs> Let me give you an answer, an idea. <coughs> <coughs> The devil don't want this one out. Look. We're surrendered to Jesus, correct? Yes. We're one with God, correct? Yes. I have been crucified with Christ, correct? Yes. I no longer live, correct? Yes. So God's will should be driving me. Correct? correct? How am I going to find that will? Okay. And part of that is going to be prayer. So I'm going to pray, and God's going to speak something. Read Reese Howell, the intercessor. His whole life, was he lived this way. He lived in the rhema. That's another word of saying he's living in the spiritual realm. He's living in the glory realm. You have to live in the... Man does not live by bread alone, but by every... That proceeds out of the mouth of God. You just never understood what that was talking about. That's, a, that's talking about the spiritual realm. That's talking about the glory realm. It's the realm of rhema. And so you go from rhema to rhema. God says, go here. Here's the secret now. You say, okay, I'm here, God. God says, I want to plant a church. Okay, God, we're going to plant a church. God, how? Everybody say, how? How? How do I plant this church? Say that. How do I plant this church? Notice what I didn't do. I didn't start putting a church here. Notice what I didn't do. I didn't hear God and go to this spot and start doing my own thing there because we've done a lot of that. I got to the spot and I say, now God... How do I do this? Meaning, give me the order, the steps, the sequence, because I don't want to do it in my own strength. I want to do it under the direction of the Holy Spirit. That's the glory realm. You don't just go and do what God says, but you do it for the right reasons. You do it for the right motivations, and you do it His way. Because when your motivations get right, then your reasons for doing things change. And so you do it because God said, not because you're trying to get recognized or you want people to pat you on the back or say, hey, good job, or wow, God really used you. And you got to get free of all that. I had to get free of all that. I'm writing newsletters. And God's like, one day comes up and says, huh. I love it when God does that. You know, God does a huh. I don't know how, where he get that from, maybe his mother or father, but he does that. Huh, huh, what are you doing? Huh, I said, I'm writing a newsletter about you. Oh, really? What are you saying? I said, I'm talking about what you did in the meeting. He said, no, you're not. You're talking about what you did in the meeting, so they'll support you in your work that I'm using you. That's what you're writing about. He said, you're not giving glory to me, you're giving glory to yourself. I said, well, that's just it. I'm just done with these newsletters. That's what I said. <laughs> that lasted about an hour. And I said, fine, I repent. He said, good. Now, and then, But I didn't write newsletters for two weeks until finally he because I, I just said, I can't do this. Because see, that's what, when God corrects us or deals with us, here's the first thing we do. I quit. I'm quitting. I don't want to play anymore. I'm going home. Because I feel rejected. Because you criticized me. You corrected me. And I know I'm wrong, but
but I'd rather be wrong than feel good. Than be corrected and be right with God and deal with my stronghold. Amen. So I'm going home. How's that working for you, by the way? <laughs> when y'all get home, y'all get all that freedom and everything? <laughs> Don't be lying. You have to repent of that, too. <laughs> Yes. Because you don't want to hurt that feeling. I'd rather say I'm wrong instead of hurt Laura's feeling. Well, you're lying too. And you're manipulating her. <laughs> but you're doing it under the banner of Jesus, so that's something. <laughs> Not much, but. <laughs> the only thing you can be rest in is that you ain't doing nothing everybody else in here is not doing. We're just calling ours different, nicer stuff. You know. <laughs> I'm for moral purity. <laughs> or I just wish those people across the street would get their act together. You know, that kind of stuff. When we ain't even in the game of letting God deal with us yet. But we got, we got, it, we got, the, we got the answer to fix everybody else. <laughs> When God showed up at your church and, and said, hey, God's at our church, praise God. Well, what if God started at the bottom of the barrel? What if he started here? Because this is the worst one, not the best one. I don't know. Maybe you said, God, oh, those people are never going to get it. I better give them some help. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. We always think it means we're doing good. Maybe it means we're doing bad. <laughs> I don't know. Time to even think about that's right. That's it. That's me. I mean, I, the only time I think about y'all is when I get a phone call. <laughs> I'm over there just dealing with my stuff. You know, me and God, we're just we're just talking. We're God. Why is it? Who? Why? What is that? God? What is that about? What? A, hello? Who? Done what? I don't care. Bye. <laughs> that's how it's going. I don't care. Not that I don't care, but I'm dealing with my stuff. Y'all going to have to wait till I get my stuff dealt with. Because you need to go deal with your stuff. Don't call me to deal with your stuff. That's what you got God for. There's a demand now in your time you didn't know you had. I can feel it. If, what it feels to, like to me is there's something pulling on my heart. That's what it feels like. Do you feel it? You know what that is? That's, you know what, you feel that? Huh? For what? To go pray. Did you pray this morning? I prayed in tongues. Okay, that'll work. Tightness. Huh? Are you talking about tightness? No, I'm, a, I'm talking about a kind of a just a, it just feels like a pulling on me, just pulling on my spirit to, you know, like, like come on. Come away with me. Come away with me. He's always pulling on me. You got to give in to that, guys. I don't care if you're at work. I don't care if you're driving down the road. Pull the car over. Trust me. Pull the car over and stop. You're gonna, I've had the best glory meetings when I just pulled the car over. He said, pull the car over. I was on my way to a church service to, to speak, and he said, pull the car over. And I was just so messed up. When I got to the church, I was so drunk, I couldn't even get inside. <clears throat> Thank you that I stopped. That's what the glory is about. That's why he's bringing that intimacy in there. He's not bringing that intimacy in there to go, hey, how's it going today? He's got stuff to tell you. He's got stuff to say to other people. And you have no idea. About a week ago or so, um, it might have even been on that Monday on Tuesday, we had the small group meeting where the Lord hit me and I was overcome with the holiness of God. And, and so I was feeling the love of God that day. I mean, it was just pouring through me. And I picked up the phone and I called my brother, my uh, second brother, middle brother, who is a, v a veteran and on a lot of drugs and you know, we, we, we don't talk much. We don't, we don't have any problems in that sense. We're just not close. And uh, so I called him up and I said, Randy, 
I said, I'm your brother, and I'm just called to tell you I love you. And I meant it. And it was, it was God telling me to do it. I could feel the emotion coming through me as I'm saying it. I just said, I, and he freaked out on the phone. He's like, oh, my God. Oh, 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 my gosh. You have no idea what you've just done. You couldn't have called and said anything more, more specific and direct than what you just said to me. And do you know he's been calling me almost every other day ever since then? Oh, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? What are you, I mean, he's just totally changed. Why? Because I called and said, I love you. That was it. Guys, I'm going to tell you, I asked the Lord this week, I said, God, what are you doing in me? He said, I'm getting, I'm healing you and I'm getting you ready to contain to contain what's coming. Which is going to be an outpouring of this love. The likes of which we've never seen before. Now, I'm just telling you right now that <laughs> Jesus must be coming soon. Get yourself in here, girl. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good to see you. <laughs> You, have you grown? You look like you've gotten taller. Give me you a know? hug, girl. How are you? Good. We're glad you're here. Good to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you found your way home. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Pastor? In the healing, as he healed us, he can use us more. We can hear more from him. But as we are healed, we begin to do things that the Holy Spirit tells us. That's right. That we would not have done. Mm -hmm. He's got me praying, and that's why he was telling me when I prayed for people, he said, just pray that they will love me like I love them. But he was really talking to me, I want you to love me. That's right. Because I'm getting ready to get you to pray for something. <laughs> so he, I, it's, yeah, I'm telling you, it's awesome. When you recognize that there needs to be a healing. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you can feel anything different in here, but God's kind of shown up and visited, and we've been having kind of revival meetings, and so we're glad you're here. Timing is perfect. Um, Y'all look very nice, by the way. Good to see you. Um, so, God is moving on everybody. I mean, we're all going through this right now. Some, some of you, God's moved in quicker than others. That's just the way it works. You know, some of you, God's tapping you on the shoulder and saying, hey, it's time to wake up. Um, guys, there's a reality of God coming to this nation, the likes of which we've not seen before. Um, the ladies that are coming up from Mobile that will be here, one of them will be here next Sunday, Elena. And then um, Sandra and Elena in L, you haven't met L, they'll be up here January. Sandra, Sandra's, uh, these are intercessors that have come up and ministered here a couple weeks ago. Um, they're moving up here. Um, she, um, you know, she's telling me that L wants to come and L speaks five languages and <laughs> she's um, real sweet, so she'll be a great compliment to that but anyway they'll be here in January and Sandra says she's coming and she doesn't know when she's leaving mm -hmm. so she's feeling God's pulling her up here and uh, so it's kind of funny she said it's kind of weird our neighborhood she said they're selling all the property around her <laughs> and she says it, it feels like God's fixing my stirring my nest and I said I ain't saying nothing I ain't saying nothing you know just let God do his thing but that's kind of cool to watch. Elena, she'd be here now if, if she could. So, um, what about Brooke? Brooke coming back? <sighs> Not sure about that yet. What's going on with all that? But um, she's, she's got some stuff in her own life that she's dealing with. So it has nothing to do with us or her or any of that. It's just she's just got stuff she's dealing with. So. Um, The anointing, when the anointing comes on you, there's one thing happening. 
Usually it's anointed a, a teacher or a minister to minister. That's what's happening. But in the glory, everything's happening. When the glory comes in here. Everybody, God is ministering to everybody. That's what it does. But in order to usher the glory in, you have to learn how to withdraw. And so, like, I would come in here and I would hear what God is saying. God might say, just like what we did tonight, <coughs> this morning, I said, everyone stand. I didn't just do that because I wanted to. I felt like God told me to do that. I said, have everyone stand. Then when I said, everyone stand, y'all stood. Then God said, now just have them worship. And so, and so see, those are directions God's given because he's dealing with something in the spirit. Because when, when you come into a meeting, God's always trying to take you from here into the glory every time. So if you, if you don't get in there, it's, it's because when I say glory, I'm talking about that physical weighty presence of God that you can feel. And, and so we want, we want that in our church. And so, you know, that comes in and, and then you know that God's there and he's going to do what he's going to do. And so then you may need love, you may need value, you may need faith, you may, so whatever's going on, you may have a fear issue. So the glory's dealing with every one of those issues at one time. That's why it's so powerful. But in order to usher it in, I have to come in and, and do obedience, be obedient. But then I also have to, because at some point the Spirit will say, okay, you're done. And then I withdraw. And I go sit down. And that allows the glory to come in heavier. So if I, don't, if I don't withdraw, now sometimes that withdrawing is to let somebody speak. See, I, I have to hear the Spirit because the Spirit's like a tapestry. Everything weaves together. Everything fits together. So when I'm watching the tapestry weaving and, I, and someone will come up and they'll say, well, here's this. And the Holy Spirit will say, now I may not go sit, may not go sit down, but the Holy Spirit will say, now you would draw and, and let this come up. And, and then they'll come up and they'll say what it says. And then the Lord says, okay, now you come in and you say this. And so that's how the service goes. God will direct everything. That's how you keep the glory steady, strong, is you have to cooperate with God. You can't come in and say, God, I'm doing this. I, what did you say? Oh, I, didn't, I didn't get that. But I'm, glory lifts. The glory lifts when you take control. When God's in control, the glory will stay here. So, look, don't take it as a rebuke. Take it as a directional indicator. You went right? Uh, -uh. You should have gone left. I don't take guilt from that. I don't take condemnation for that because all my sins are removed. I don't want to get too deep into this theology of sin at this point, but just know that you're forgiven. It's all been removed. So what do you think God's up there thinking about when you're doing your stuff? You think he's up there going... You made a mistake. You made a mistake. You think he's saying that? He's not saying that. He's not talking about something he's already dealt with. He's talking about son, daughter. You're here. You should be here. Get from here over to here. <laughs> there ain't no condemnation. There ain't no guilt. There ain't nothing to be broken about or sorry about unless it's revealing a stronghold and that's another issue but just cooperate with God and get over there but see religion when you hear that word to get over there religion says you're not worthy you're not good enough you've never been able to accomplish anything you, you, you're all, they're always telling you're a failure you know you're a failure and so you got to hear that junk all the way over here I'm like, aren't you tired? Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? I am. I mean, hey, if this is working for you the way you're doing it, then keep doing it. But it ain't working for me. It ain't worked for me. This is what's worked for me, is, is serving God, 
seeking his glory, following him. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. I am so glad to see you two. You have no idea. I feel like my two daughters have returned home. It is Thanksgiving coming up, so praise God for that. But I'm so glad to see y'all. You're, you're beautiful, both of you. Um, she was, I don't even know if this was the message today. <laughs> Whatever. It was good. Hallelujah. Let me give you, I, I know some of y'all that take notes, I'm going to give you some points because you always like points at the end. So how do you usher the glory in? Okay. How do you carry this in your life? That's what, that's the bottom line. Give me the bottom line, God. Just tell me the bottom line, what I need to be doing. There are four things I want you to give here. Number one, you have to become one in mind and body. God is desiring oneness with you. So you, you may have to deal with some issues of your will, um, control, and we've all got some of that to some degree. So become one in mind and body. <coughs> so understand what authority is. I don't have authority to release the glory in my own strength. But when God directs me to go to a place and says, go and do this and say this and do this, and then he releases the glory. It, you know, I'm standing there, but it's really God doing it. So that, that, once you understand that about the glory, is it's, it's God uses us to dispense it, but we have to do it under His direction. Does that make sense? So become one mind and body. And know God is desiring you to be one with Him. Number two is from John 4 where it says, He is seeking the true worshipers. To be a true worshiper in spirit and truth. God's will is how He moves His glory. And that's what I was saying. I don't actually have the authority. You don't have the authority un unless we're doing what He says when He says it. But I must not be moved for my need for identity. Let me say it this way. I must not be moved or affected by my lack of value. If I don't know my value, if I feel like when you're a prisoner of war, you know why they isolate you? They break you away from all of your relationships in order to reprogram you. So knowing your identity, knowing who you are in Christ, knowing that you're saved, God's forgiven you, you have His righteousness, knowing these things allows you to not be manipulated by the enemy. Because that's what the enemy, that's why the breastplate of righteousness is righteousness. The breastplate. Very important piece of armor. But I must not be moved by lies or instances of identity. Man's truth is old truth. Here's the problem with the glory realm. When this hit, in Africa, I had nobody to go to. I had nobody to go to. And in 1999, there was one book. I know now why God did it this way. 1999, one book in the glory on Ruth Ward Heflin's book, which I read. But I couldn't get anything, and I couldn't find anybody that knew what I was walking in. And so, can you imagine the disillusionment? But listen... That actually ended up being a strengthening because I had to go to God to get information that nobody else knew. God was giving me revelation that no one else had heard before. God was teaching me about the glory. I met with Ruth Ward Heflin's assistant who said she never had this information you've, God's given you. So I know God has given me this revelation. And I know the reason why is because I didn't go to man. I didn't go, there was no book to see. I had to go straight, straight to God. Listen, if we don't get this religion off of us, 
and realize God's going to be giving us answers and information that we have never had before, that we need for what's coming, then we have to realize that we've got to live in the moment of the rhema. We've got to live in the moment of the spoken word of God because that's, that, that's what's coming. It's, it's not about what man has said or how we've done it in the past. It's about what God is saying now to step here at this time, in this place, in this way. That's what God's looking for, that radical obedience where people that, and, and when you commit to that, listen, when you yield to that, He will open up areas of communication to you you've not even experienced. He, listen, you have no idea what he's holding back. He's holding back stuff that he wants to give you in the glory realm. But we have to understand, we've got to be a true worshiper. We've got to be in love with him. We've got, and that's why today was very important. When y'all responded, the worship is like God said, okay, now you can do the message. Because see, they're making a demand on me. You don't realize how your worship affects the heavens. Your worship changes God's mind. Your worship is how you draw in the spirit through the glory. Worship is how you, 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 set, you set the table. You come in here, sometimes you're, you're tired, you're discouraged. Do you ever think why you're tired and discouraged? Do you think maybe the enemy put that spirit on you before you could go to church so you wouldn't come in and worship and do all that you should do so you wouldn't receive what you should receive? Do you ever think maybe that, do you feel that way because the enemy put that spirit on you to keep you in that place? Did you know that when you come into church and you let the spirit direct you and you worship that all that stuff comes off of you? You wonder why you're struggling. Why? I told someone the other day, you know why you're struggling? You know why you're suffering? Because you keep doing things the same way. And you keep thinking it's going to get different. It won't ever be different. You've got to start to change the way you do things. And that's what we're talking about here. The glory realm. So we've got to be true worshipers. Number three. Do God's will God's way. Obedience has motivation in it. You know how many times God said, like, put, some, put something in the offering? I'll never forget this one. I've told you the story. I love the story. God said, put $20 in the offering plate, and I heard $5. So 20 and 5 Okay, when the offering plate passes, and you hear two amounts, nine times out of ten, it's the higher amount that God's speaking. Just saying. Okay. So God says $20 and $5. So I put $5 in there because I figured, hey, I'm in Africa. I'm doing God's work. $5. Be plenty. <laughs> Offer plate passes. And I'm sitting up there ready to preach. I'm, in, I'm on the podium. I'm in the chair. Nobody's up there. I got the microphone. God says, when the offering's coming, you can go. God's like, no, you ain't preaching. The offering plate leaves and they take it in the back. And God says, you ain't preaching until you put... The rest of that money I told you to put in there. So I went and put $15 in there. And, and I went and I did it like this. I was like, fine. <laughs> so I went and sat down. And God said, you ain't preaching. You still haven't obeyed me. I said, God said, I, told, I didn't say five. I didn't say 15. I said, put 20 in the offering plate. So I had to go put, so I said, now that's $35 right now. That was an expensive <laughs> lesson. <laughs> but, but, but guys, God is trying to teach, was trying to teach me something. When God says put 20, don't put five, don't put, put what he says put in there. <coughs> There's a reason why he's telling us these things, because sometimes the specifics of obedience are very, very important. And we need to understand that. So we've got to do it God's way. God's will, God's way. And you're walking His authority. Isaiah 43, 7, 
tells us the only thing that can affect the glory where it says, God says, I will not trust my glory to another, meaning idol. And so God will not allow his glory to be in your life if there's an idol there. Uh, he'll let it stay for a while, but he'll deal with you. You got to deal with the idol. And so I would venture to say probably everybody in here, God's dealing with you about something. He's dealing with you about something. And that's what he's saying to you today. Yield your idols to me. Walk in repentance. Become one mind and, my, one and, mind and body. Become a true worshiper. Do God's will, God's way. And make sure of your motives when you're serving God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness and your mercies. They're new every day. We ask you to bless our time today. Thank you for your glory and your presence, Lord. Whew. Whew. Mm. So, Lord, we ask you to fill us right now with the glory. Lord, I ask you to touch and restore, bring freedom. Bring victory, bring victory, bring freedom. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Keep up, 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 see. Keep up, 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 see.